My name is Christine Sloan Stoddard and I work in creative writing and interdisciplinary visual and digital art. I'm mixed race. My mother is from El Salvador. She's mestiza, which means that she is of indigenous and European descent. Uh, she's primarily of the Papil Indians, which are the Aztecan and Mayan people of El Salvador. And my father is white. He's Scottish American. His grandparents came from Scotland. And I'm very much a product of my upbringing as a bicultural person in the South. I grew up in Virginia and lived in the capital of the Confederacy for quite a while. Um, my mom grew up in El Salvador. That's where she was born, raised, is where our ancestors are from. And that is a country where often girls don't get to finish school because you become socially a woman at age 15 when you have your quince. So my mother didn't finish her schooling. Uh, so I take my education and my opportunity to express myself very seriously. Even when I'm saying funny things or I'm doing fanciful things, I take that opportunity very seriously because it's something that my mom and all of her female relatives uh, were denied. I got so depressed during quarantine at the very start. I think like many people, uh, especially active people who are out in the community, even as an introverted person, I make an effort to be out, showing my work, meeting other people, looking at their work, just sharing and learning and trying to have conversations with different kinds of people. It was really difficult. It was also very difficult at the start to even have a place to work. I do work for a few different organizations and most of them offer me space of some kind. So I have little studios and closets tucked all over the city. And to not have access to any of those spaces and the vast majority of my materials and older works was such a challenge. So I adapted. I made sure that everything I was making, I could make on my computer or at my kitchen table. I already worked a lot digitally, just writing, doing a lot of photography and videography, but painting, sculpture making, that sort of work, I tend to do on a larger scale. So to have to reduce my workspace to my kitchen table meant that I was mainly doing watercolors, very small watercolors, um, really nothing bigger than 12 by 16. But at the beginning of quarantine and, and really as quarantine went on, that sketchbook practice evolved into more of, of my visual diary, just what I was thinking, what I was feeling, often with no specific larger project in mind, just what was going on in my head and my heart that day. Um, as far as my family, <sighs> yeah, the pandemic's been hard. My husband was furloughed and we get all of the benefits for us as a couple through his job. So we have to figure out what to do. Uh, luckily, I'm still earning an income, not as much as I was before, I do have two contracts that are long term and that I've been able to adapt uh, largely for video chat, but a lot of the other kinds of work where I would go into a school, go into a theater, go into a gallery, that has all dried up. For the most part, that work doesn't exist anymore. My mother doesn't work because of medical issues. Uh, and also some cultural issues, uh, cultural traditions, I should say, not issues. Um, so just trying to be there for my parents, uh, especially since they live in another state, and trying to figure out what the financial long-term plan for them might be has been extremely stressful, um, especially given my mom's medical condition. She is a very vulnerable person and cannot, absolutely cannot get COVID. 
yeah, so it's been hard. It's been hard for everybody, <laughs> but it's been hard. I was very informed by nature for this piece. We had a chance to look at all the spots on Zoom in advance. And as soon as I saw this spot, I gravitated toward it. I loved the shade. I loved all the different uh, trees and logs and rocks, even the mulch and the other littering on the ground, just natural littering. Uh, and I already had some pieces that I had started to make or was at least thinking about that I knew I wanted to bridge together into some kind of installation. And then once I actually got to the site and was able to play around with what was here, I just picked up whatever interested me and included it in the installation. So in doing a little bit of research about this spot, about the Queen's Botanical Garden, I learned that it was a former landfill. While I was just street combing, I found these old cabinet doors on the side of the street and figured, you know, this is my gate. This is the gate to this installation. So I'll take you to the heart of it, the nest. So this is Rabbit Storytelling Throne and all the little odds and ends, a combination of handmade things, digitally made things, and a lot of them uh, really bring the digital and the handmade, handmade together. Like those two pieces in the back in particular uh, are photo based, but they also have some drawing in them. This chair was something that I also salvaged from the street uh, while I was street combing and just looking for materials to work with. It stood out to me as the throne. I came across a lot of chairs, but this is my top pick. So I only very recently got access to two of the spaces where I have different materials and work. Uh, this was in the past two weeks. So prior to that, I was making everything at home, working digitally or only on very small handmade pieces that I could work on at my kitchen table. And I would collaborate with people mainly over Zoom and other kinds of video chat. Um, just having the chance to revisit some of my studio slash storage spaces uh, after three months of not seeing them was extremely emotional. And it led me to just dig through stuff for hours and, and think very nostalgically about pieces I had made over the years, things that I hadn't sold, or things I had held on to for whatever reason. Um, and having the chance to, to bring some of these pieces from different eras of my life while also over the past like week and a half sitting down and reconstructing things, refiguring things and then coming to this space, uh, which I'm sure under normal circumstances is never this quiet, but having a couple of hours where I can just work in close to isolation, semi-isolation, was a real luxury in a way, uh, especially after all of us have lost so many things, and in some cases people in the past three months, uh, this was really calming. I was really into the different stumps that they have all around this play area. I'm told that under normal circumstances they use this area for a toddler's summer camp. So it's a place where kids run around and make teepees and forts and whatever else they imagine, little fire pits. I love the stumps because they reminded me of a few different things. One is my childhood and just playing around stumps as a kid growing up in Virginia. Uh, two is just the connection to trees that I've always had, have had, and that my mother in particular has. When she came to the United States from El Salvador, there were actually a lot of things she didn't miss because she left during the Civil War. Uh, I mean, she grew up during the Civil War, left as a young adult while the Civil War was still going on. But she did really miss the plants and the animals.
because the, the plants and the animals here are just different than the ones that she grew up with. And they were very strange to her. Um, but she also found some comfort in learning about the different species of trees and other plants in Florida where she first lived and then Virginia. So I've always gravitated toward trees. Work outside or in any kind of on-site installation, I can really just freestyle, have fun, experiment more. And I'm not worried about commerce. I'm not worried about what's going to sell or what is going to attract uh, really any kind of attention other than creative interests and imagination. Here I'm really just getting to, to play like I did as a kid and I love that and I hope that the people view the piece or even interact with the piece because they are welcome to touch things. Everything is shellacked to death. <laughs> um, yeah, I want them to have fun too. Especially since this area is where the children have their summer camp. Um, if they come back in the fall and they have some kind of after school program, I want them to run toward this and be like, what is this? And that's not something that children get to do in the average gallery. This piece is called Rabbit Storytelling Throne. I have always gravitated toward animals just as a general interest, but also in my artwork and my creative writing. But one of the reasons why I chose rabbits specifically for this piece was, yes, it is the children's area and rabbits are cute and sweet and children tend to love them, but I've always associated rabbits with um, this kind of xenophobic, racist thing that my sisters and I would hear a lot when we were kids. So we grew up in a very white uh, Protestant area, and my dad is white, but my dad also worked a lot, so he kind of wasn't super involved in my childhood. Good dad, but just working all the time. My mom was often confused for our nanny darker than us, and a lot of people say she doesn't look like us, and she's also Catholic, or she was raised Catholic, and some Protestants often, when they're talking neg negatively about Catholic immigrants, will say they breed like rabbits, and that's not a nice thing, it's not, oh, they're so prosperous, they're so fertile, look at all the children they have, no, it, it's almost like they're vermin, we're vermin. There are too many of us. Look at how many there are. My sisters and I are all really close in age. I'm 31, the next one is 30, and the baby is 28. So we were all in school, at the same school, at the same time. And often, like until I hit my growth spurt, often adults, even ones who had known us our entire lives, would confuse the three of us. Like they, they couldn't tell us the part. They couldn't tell the three kids whose mom looks like their nanny apart. So it was, and as much as I love rabbits and think they're adorable, I just have this negative connotation. Um, and I was interested in, in changing that story and coming up with this little storytelling throne, coming up with some kind of altar to the rabbit and trying to focus on other things about rabbits and other kinds of folklore. Rabbits are a good thing. They're, they are a, a prosperous, positive animal. Um, and that's something I hope to think more about.